Katie here. Austin just got home from work. He went in. He just went in and went to bed. Uh, he's been working night shift. Me and Tech Boy are getting ready to head out. Uh, he has a pediatric urology specialist doctor's appointment. Um, this is his first one, so we'll kind of figure out a little bit more. He has hypospadias when he was born, and that's why we thought, uh, well, that's why the doctor thought we were having a girl for so long as opposed to a boy. And we got little tuck man, but yes, he, he might have to have surgery. Um, we'll keep you all updated on that. Uh, tonight's going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a little bit of a story time. We have some really funny stories and stuff uh, just about since we've been here. So we'll get back with you. Tucky boy to the doctor. Uh, we found out that he is going to have to have surgery and it's set up for September. They said it'd be like a uh, three hour surgery. Then he's going to have to have recovery afterwards and it's a whole ordeal, which is not really great news. Not very fun and exciting. He also has to get tested for COVID three days before. So that should be a very interesting uh, Ask to do. But what we're going to do today is we're just going to talk to you a little bit about what it's been like in the military life and uh, just this first year of all the craziness that has gone on. And we got a few funny stories for you along the way. Uh, to start off this little story time slash like Q&A thing, uh, I'm going to start out by talking about what it's like, what it was like going to BMT and METS and just being in the Air Force in general. And before we get into that, I just want to give a disclaimer that this is not the views of the Air Force or the Department of Defense or anything in like that in general. This is just my own personal opinion. But um, first of all, I started talking with the recruiter sometime back at the beginning of 2019. And then finally went to METS. I had to go to METS two different times because I went to METS the first time and was completely cleared on everything except for my pulse. For some reason that day my pulse was super high and I could never get it below 100, 100 beats per minute. So therefore I had to go get a pulse evaluation from my civilian doctor and then go back to METS. Uh, but other than that, uh, I came back and went to the doctor, and then I went back on June the 2nd or June the 3rd of 2019, and that's when I swore into what they call the DEP program, which is Delayed Entry Program. That's where you sit and wait for a job and a shift date, and I wasn't in the, I was only in the, like I said, I swore in on June the 2nd or June 3rd, and I had a job and a shift date by June 26th. To that exact date is when I got a call from my recruiter, and he told me that I had booked uh, POL, which is fuels, and I was leaving September 24th, and that's when it started my journey, and then BMT, I got to BMT um, on the night of the 24th, and that was literally the longest night ever. We Alrighty guys, uh, so I got to BMT on the night of the 24th, and when you get there, they pull the bus up to what they call the, the PF Kingston uh, Reception Center, and then you, they, uh, MTI is going to come on the bus in the big campaign hat, and he's going to start yelling at everybody. Well, for us, he didn't like yell a whole lot. They just kind of gave us, told us we had such and such amount of time to get off the bus. Uh, it honestly wasn't as bad as what other people were making it out to be, but. They rush you off the bus and you go into the reception center and you go and you sit down in the big auditorium and they give you what they what you call a box nasty 
Uh, it's a box lunch. It's got like a sub sandwich, some Oreos, a juice box, and I can't remember what else it had in it, but I tried to eat that as much as I can. The sandwich was like frozen. Uh, and then after that, they take you through and you get all of, you get like your Apex parka, which is like a rain jacket, and then you get your big backpack that's got everything in it that you're gonna need to make it through the eight and a half weeks of BMT. And then after that, that's like when you start your whole, your whole thing, like you get your uniforms. So you get there on a Tuesday night and you get your uniforms, I think we got ours on Thursday or Friday. And then that's when all of BMT starts. BMT wasn't that bad. I kind of enjoyed it. I would do it again if they asked me to. And, but yeah, that BMT was not that bad at all. All right, and then in the eight and a half, I'm gonna skip a lot of stuff because I really don't remember everything I did in those eight and a half weeks, but the eight and a half week, you basically, it's just graduation, getting ready for that. Uh, final out processing to leave Lackland Air Force Base and go to your technical training, which mine was at Shepard Air Force Base, Texas. Uh, I was there for 31 days, but back to graduation. Uh, graduation week one was my probably my favorite week. Because, it was my favorite week too because I actually finally got to see him after. But forever. the coin, the coin ceremony, like I don't know, it's hard to explain. You just would have to go and experience a graduation, whether you know somebody there or not. I feel like that's something that if you can if you can get on the Air Force base and experience an Air Force graduation or any type of military graduation, that that's something that everybody should experience because it just it brings a whole new meaning to being an American. Like it's awesome to see young kids live. Most of them, not most of them, but I guess some of them, their lives are changed and their lives are turned around. I've met several kids throughout BMT that I became friends with that it just changed their life and it changed mine too because now I'm not living paycheck to paycheck anymore I'm actually making a pretty steady living right now and I'm not even working right now so and we're doing like just fine but uh, the coin ceremony is awesome I don't, you get a you get a coin that your MTI presents to you during the coin ceremony and that is on Thursday and you get that and then but before the coin ceremony they do what they call an airman's run maybe we can post a clip in here of that but that was pretty cool um the airman's run was pretty fun you all you run in your flight and you're a different squadron and you just sing you do joe what they call jody's and chants uh but the coin ceremony was really awesome uh and then friday you get in your dress blues and you actually do march across the parade across the parade field or across the graduation grounds across a little bit away from the base where the coin ceremony was at that was pretty cool. Ours was pouring down rain and it was like 40 degrees that day, so it was not the warmest of days. But other than that, graduation was super awesome because then I got to see all my family that I hadn't been able to see in eight and a half weeks and that was just amazing. I can't imagine the kids going through now that don't get to see their families at graduation due to COVID, but uh, more power to them because, I don't know, it just ta it's, it takes a special person to, go through that and not be able to see family at the end of the graduation. But. All right guys, uh, here's my Airman's coin that you get right here. You can only get these if you complete Air Force BMT, but there's the there's one side of it and then there's the other side of it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is one of my favorite coins. I have several coins and maybe one of these days we'll do a video and I'll show you all my different coins that I have, but this one right here is my favorite. So but there's that. All right, and then after he went to BMT, he went on to tech school at Shepherd and Wichita Falls, Texas. In Wichita Falls, Texas, there's literally nothing to do down there. I went down there the last two. It's a very very boring weeks. place, there's especially if you're in tech school because you really can't go anywhere until you get second phase, and even then, like you can only go a certain amount of distance from the base. Basically, it's just like. Uh, getting certified in your job is what it is. And then after that, we moved here, which is only four hours away from that other base um, here to Wichita. And when we got here, we didn't really have a place to go. We had to stay in a hotel for- Like a week like, or two. Uh, it was almost two weeks that we stayed in a hotel. And we didn't have any of our stuff because they hadn't uh, shipped it to us yet from that tune. So 
this whole time we were literally living out of our suitcase until we finally got our stuff. Probably, I think, about a month and a half after we had already been here. So, it took a little bit to get our stuff here. But then once we finally did get everything here... And we started going to church, and then everything decided to go crazy and hectic, and uh, the whole entire country decided to shut down. So then we just sat here staring at our walls. Cause and doing a lot do. of fishing. Yes. I think I have, this past month, I've probably fished every day except for one day. Yeah. It was, that's basically all we do, fishing, and then we picked up a new sport, which is disc golf which is really fun. We like to do that. Um, and then, uh, once we got settled in everything, um, we have a couple minor hiccups with a car. Our car. Um, I awesome. might, have, <laughs> might have. Might have been backing twice. out of the garage a little too quick. Twice. twice. Not just twice. once, twice. The first time. And the first time was okay. It just scratched up the side of the car and dented the side of the car and then just bent the bent the mirror in and it was good and I just bent it back out and it was fine. And then the second time I did it, I knocked the glass completely out of the mirror and shattered it on the ground. So that's why our mirror in some of, one of our videos, that's why the mirror is completely shattered. I'm still trying to use it because I have not had the time to get around and replace it. I need to do that. It so, doesn't cost very much, so I need to do that. Moral of the story is, I'm the better driver. No, she never drives. <laughs> I drive a lot. Well, actually, that's another story. When I got here, my license expired on my birthday. We got here like a week before my birthday. And my license expired on my birthday, so he had to drive until... Illinois opened back up their driver's license facilities that I could renew it online and get it sent here, which my mom still has it. She has not sent it yet, so. Alright guys, this next video is going to take us to the bathroom where this funny story happened with Katie a couple weeks ago, and Katie? Alright, so you may be wondering why I'm in the shower, but I have to show you this lovely window that is in our shower. Okay, so I'm Me and Tuck were in the pool when this happened. Okay, so I'm sitting here and I'm washing my hair like no big deal. That's not what you do in the shower. You wash your butt and your hair. But then, all of a sudden, this decided to go like this. Okay, and here's our backyard. And then the neighbors over and there can I clearly see I, in here. Well, I wasn't thinking very much of it. I was just like, oh, it's fine. Austin and Tuck are just in the backyard in the pool. I waved at them, and then I instantly realized that my neighbors could see me in my full glory. And so I literally ended up just shooting to the bottom of the like tub and just laying there because I this had gone all the way up so far so that I can't reach it. And I was naked, so I couldn't like just reach up and grab it so I literally just kind of crawled out of the tub and got my clothes and then later I came back and I shut the window. Moral of the story is don't put windows in your showers. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching today's video. Uh, if you like this video, so like it and subscribe and comment below for more video ideas. And we will catch you next time.